Welcome everybody. We've learned a lot about the simplex method. I want to talk about some other methods which are um, important and used to solve linear uh, programming problems. The first method we'll talk about over the next couple of days is the ellipsoid method. And it was the first algorithm that was proven to solve linear programs in polynomial time. Okay. So the simplex method, it's not known whether it can solve linear programming problems in polynomial time or not. There's so many different pivot rules you could choose. And you know, maybe somebody could come up with a new clever pivot rule that does lead to polynomial time algorithms. I sort of doubt that. Most pivot rules, you know, including the ones we've discussed, are known to not be polynomial time. They require exponential time in the worst case. So being the first method to run in polynomial time, the ellipsoid method is quite theoretically important. Um, just both from this theoretical observation that you can solve any linear programming problem in polynomial time, but it's also important because it's led to more practical developments um, that compete with the simplex method even though the ellipsoid method does not compete with the simplex method in practice. So whenever you're trying to solve a linear programming problem on a computer, essentially do not use the ellipsoid method. There are, there are much better methods. The simplex method is better. And there's even um, interior point methods, which are also polynomial time, but, but much, much, much faster. Okay. Um, so why is the ellipsoid method not competitive in practice, right? It's polynomial, whereas the simplex algorithm is not. Why is the ellipsoid method not, not fast? So one explanation for that would be that, yes, it's polynomial, but it's polynomial of a very high degree, right? So a low degree polynomial would be linear or quadratic. You know, a higher degree polynomial would be cubic, quartic, quintic. So the, the sort of map of the linear programming world might be for uh, most problems, the simplex method is extremely fast. In the worst case, for sort of artificially constructed examples that an enemy hands to you, it's um, exponentially bad. You know, but you know, this is sort of like 99% of um, of problems, you know, and this is at most one percent. So that's why the simplex method is so good on the vast majority of problems. Um, it's it's super super fast. I don't mean those percentages to be exact. I'm just trying to get you uh, thinking uh, yeah, in, in the same way I am. The ellipsoid method, by comparison, um, in the worst case, it's high degree polynomial. I actually don't know the degree. I'd be interested if any of you do, okay, which is better than exponentially bad, but it's still high degree polynomial. On, on the easy problems as well, okay? So it's like simplex method is typically super good. The worst case, it's very bad, but the ellipsoid method is in general, um, in general, uh, just like overall not great. It's, it's almost like you have an employee, right? This is an employee who um, arrives on time um, every week of the year, except they have a couple of days where they call in sick and, and can't make it to work, okay? Would you rather hire that person or whether, would you rather hire this person who um, consistently is 15 minutes late? you know, to your hour long meeting. Might be an, an analogy. Okay. Let me talk about the history of the ellipsoid method for a little bit. It was invented in, in 1970 by Shore, Judin, uh, Nemirovsky to solve nonlinear problems, okay? So it was designed for nonlinear problems. But 
almost a decade later in 1979, a Russian mathematician, Leonid Kachian, showed that when you're looking at linear problems, it solves them in polynomial time. Okay, it was an open question, are linear programming problems polynomial or not? And first in 1979, they were proved to be solvable in polynomial time using the ellipsoid method. You know, this was still like, you know, tensions of the Cold War, Russia versus the US. So there's this funny um, Times interview where the writer, Brown, is interviewing Danzig. Danzig um, was at Stanford at the time. So Danzig sort of represented maybe the US school of linear programming. Danzig invented the simplex method. And Brown was trying to stir up controversy. Hey, look, you know, the the uh, Russian mathematicians have now found a um, sort of a polynomial time algorithm. Like, um, and the, the interesting part of this interview is that Danzig sort of realizes that it's not competitive in practice, right? The writer, the Times writer realizes that it's theoretically quite good. And, and so they're trying to like, fight with each other to argue whether this is a big advancement or not. So let me just read um, a summary of the interview. So Brown, the writer says, what about the traveling salesperson problem? Danzig says, if there is a connection, I don't know what it is. <laughs> so Danzig's overly harsh. He's just like, no, there's no connection between the traveling salesperson problem and the Floyd method. Then the, the writer Brown says, the Russian discovery proposed an approach for solving a class of problems related to the traveling salesperson problem. And then Danzig says nothing. And then Brown tries again, what about cryptography? And then Danzig says again, if there is a connection, I don't know what it is. And then Brown says the theory of codes could eventually be effective. And Danzig just says nothing. And then Brown says, is the Russian method practical? And Danzig says, no. And then Brown, the writer says, mathematicians describe this, the discovery as a method by which computers can find solutions to a class of very hard problems that has hitherto been attacked on a hit or miss basis. Anyways, in, in some sense, they're both right. You know, theoretically it is um, better in the worst case. Um, and Danzig's right that on most cases, it's not worth even trying. But it, it's funny that it sort of became a political a little bit in, in the Cold War era. Um, okay, I should say though that the ellipsoid method has been significant practically because it's led to advancements of other algorithms that are both provably good in the worst case, polynomial in the worst case, and also very fast practically. In particular, interior point methods which we'll talk about. So interior point methods are in some sense, the best of both worlds. Some interior point methods are polynomial time in the worst case, and interior point methods can compete with the simplex algorithm on some problems. So I think the simplex algorithm is still faster on most, most problems, but I don't know, maybe 10 to 25% to 40%, I really don't know of problems. The interior point method is, is actually faster than the simplex algorithm. I have, I have no knowledge of the, the percentage. Questions so far? Two methods that we have not really discussed in this class, but I wanna make a note to return to our dual simplex method and the primal tool dual method. I know many of you know more about these than I do. Roughly see, speaking, the dual simplex method is just performing the, the simplex method on the dual linear programming problem. But there are some implementation details that can lead to crucial speed ups. And if you let M be the number of constraints, And if you let n be the number of variables, then the dual simplex method is particularly good when um, 
you know, the number of additional variables beyond the number of constraints is very small compared to the number of constraints. Primal dual methods, similar to the dual simplex method, they pass through feasible solutions of the dual, but not via pivot steps. So this is intriguing to me. They instead proceed via an auxiliary problem, an auxiliary linear programming problem to go from one vertex to another. Um, and they're particularly really nice for giving good approximations on combinatorial optimization problems. I suspect I might have butchered that description because I don't know much about primal dual methods. Any uh, uh, additional comments? Wonderful. So uh, thanks so much. And next we'll uh, proceed to talk a little bit more about the ellipsoid method and interior point methods. Thanks. <laughs>